So our next example was to determine by integration the area bounded by the three straight line y equal to 4 minus x, y equal to 3x, and 3y equal to x. So if you watched my previous tutorial on how to draw a graph of such function, I explained certain things and I was able to come out finally with this graph. So what I was saying is that when you have some questions like it, which involve three graphs like this, you see the graph, them, uh, all the three graphs here, which is what y equal to 4 minus x, y equal to 3x, and 3y equal to x. And since they are asking you to find the enclosed area or the bounded area, they are trying to give you the hint that this graph will be meeting at a point. Because if they don't meet, there will be no way to confirm an enclosed area. So first of all, you can decide to equate all these functions together two by two, like first function meeting the second function, first function meeting the third function, the second function meeting the third function. So doing that, you'll be able to come out with some values of x. And we were able to come out with x equal to 1 for the first function and the second function, x equal to 3 for the first function and the last function, and x equal to 0 for the first fu uh, second function and the third function. So getting them, we were able to draw a graph like it means that the meeting points are going to be 0 here, 1 here, and then 3 here, as you can see on the screen. So when we were able to come up with the meeting points, we were saying that we need to also find out at x equal to 0, what are we going to get the value for the function value? So we said that at x equal to 0 for the first function, right, y equal to what 4. When you put x inside the function, you are going to get y to be 4. So the point is going to be 0 and 4. So this is the point that we got. And then the second one, after putting everything inside, we were able to come out with a point which is 0, zero because at x equal to 0, when you put x equal to 0 here, you are going to get y equal to 0. So the point is going to be 0, 0. <coughs> so the third function, we also put x equal to 0 and then we got y equal to 0. So now we know that at x equal to 0 for the first function, y equal to 4. So this is it. So at, at x equal to 0, y here, it's what 4. At x equal to 0 here, y is 4. Yeah, so we're able to come out with something like this and then since we're able to come out with something like uh, the values over here and then the meeting points we also wrote them here so now i was telling you that the first function has a slope of negative one as i discussed with you from the uh, uh, previous um question and negative one which is a rise and what run right other um gradient of negative one when we compare it to y equal to mx plus c right then the gradient is supposed to be negative one over here so finding the gradient to be negative one finding the gradient to be negative one over here we can see that the function was uh, the line was slant a bit so that at the end when you do the gradient you are going to get negative one and then from there we, we came to the second function and we said that at s equal to 0 over here, y will also be equal to 0. So that means the function will start at the origin. When it starts at the origin, it means that it needs to go up. And if it's going up, it's supposed to meet either the x as a, the first function or the second function. Right? When it's meeting the first function, which is y equal to 4 minus x, we did some calculations here. And after the calculation, we were able to figure out that we meet that y equal to 4 minus x at x equal to 1. So at x equal to 1 here, the function met each other over here. Right? That's where we got the meeting point. And then, um, when we do for this function, um, the second function, now we are done with that one. When we do 
when you do for the second function and the third function, definitely we are going to get zero. That's where it met. We have already done that. And then looking at the third function, this is a third function. So this third function, is it going to meet the first function, which is this? Yes, we did some calculation over here and we figure out that the second function and then the third function will be meeting at zero. That means it also passed through the origin. But the second function, the third function will meet the first function at a point. And let's look at that point. When we did it here, the first function was 4 minus x. And then the third function of x over 3. And after the calculation, we were able to come out with x equal to 3. That means that the third function will meet this first function at x equal to 3. That's when we were able to come here. Therefore, at the end of the day, our enclosed area is becoming this point. Now, what is next? The next thing is for us to figure out how we will be able to calculate for the value or the area, right? How we'll be able to calculate for the area. So as I was saying, I told you that this function, whatever you are supposed to do, it's the one at the top is supposed to be positive. The one at the down is supposed to be negative, as we did for the second question, right? So now looking at this, when you pick these two graphs, the top one is going to be positive, the down one is going to be negative. But to make our work easier, if you decide to evaluate it from 0 to 3 straight away, you can say that my y equal to 3x is positive. You are y equal to um, 3y equal to x here, it's what? Negative. But what about this function? How are you going to classify it? That will make a little bit the work to be a little bit um, difficult, right? To be able to figure out how you will do it. Now we have a three meeting point, one, two, and what, three here. You can divide the question into two from zero to one over here. From zero to one over here is covered with this area. And this area is enclosed between this function and this function. So in that case, we'll be able to figure it out. We can see that our overall function is going to be 3x. And then this is the last function. It's also going to be minus x over 3. And you need to evaluate it over 0 to 1. And the same thing applies to the second one. When we are done with this one, you move next from 1 to 3. And the 1 to 3 is also covered the two functions this function and then this function and you need that you know that this function at the top this one is down so now plus we need to because we are dividing them into two because when we are done we need to add the areas and therefore plus the integral of one to three and then the functions the upper function will be this one the upper function will be four minus x and then minus the lower function which is what x over three that's how it's supposed to be. So let's try and solve it. So currently, as I said earlier on, we are going to get a, a graph like that, as I showed you. And from there, you'll be able to evaluate it from, from 0 to 1 of the upper function, which is what? 3x minus x over 3 dx then plus integral from 1 to 3 of 4 minus x minus minus 3 minus x over 3 because that's dx as i said earlier on this graph was the one which was down and this was the one which was down so from here, you'll be able to do your integration, which is what? 3x squared over 2 minus x squared over 6 from 0 to 1 plus 4x minus x squared over 2 minus x squared over 6. That is from 1 to 3. And from there, you'll be able to get something like 
3 over 2 minus 1 over 6 minus 0 0 and then plus 12 minus 9 over 2 minus 9 over 6 so this is the substitution that I just did over here and at the end of the day you are going to get a value to be 4 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 6 and when you are done you are supposed to get a value of what um, one whole number 1 over 3 plus 6 minus 3 whole number 1 over 3 and doing your simplification and adding them you are going to get 4 square units so this is how you'll be able to solve such function later on if the graph that I drew was not clear I'll bring you or I'll show you the original graphs in a short video so that you'll be able to just um, look at it. I think it's, that one will be very fair, right? Show you the original graph of all the three questions so that at least you can do your own to compare with it. If my graphs here, they are not clear for you. Sure. Thank you for watching. See you in my next tutorial.